Hi and welcome to episode 124 of the This Is Reportage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I am the founder of This Is Reportage and This Reportage family, and I'm a photographer too. Excited to chat to the fab Francesca Codispotti this week. Originally from Italy and now based in London, Francesca recently picked up two awards from us in the first collection of 2023 on this reportage family, and she shares so much in the episode today, including moving from Italy to England and how she discovered documentary family photography, why it can be important and not shoot wide open, home renovations and a celebrity crush, her favourite lenses for documentary, the story behind a recent Family Story Award, vacation photography, our Netflix synopsis game, the business side of what we do, and much, much more. Hey, Francesca, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am, yeah, good. Good as well. Good as well. The um, the sun is a, a bit sunny in Cornwall. How's it with you? Because you're in, you're in yeah. London, aren't you? Yeah, nothing. Uh, overcast. Is it overcast? Cold. Yeah, nothing, nothing. Oh, Backward. yeah, it's... Okay, yeah, we do have a little bit of sun, which is quite nice, but it is a rare occurrence, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> but it's still cold as well. We've been without a boiler for like, ooh, like two and a half, nearly three months now. It's really sucks. Are you surviving? Oh, uh, we've got these little cheap electric heaters. Well, I'd say cheap to buy, but they probably cost loads to run, actually. That, that makes me cold just to hear it. <laughs> <It's> I, know. <laughs> <good>. <laughs> I know, it sucks, doesn't it? Are you? Um, do you generally have a nice, cosy home? Uh, yeah it's fine we we our house has been we ne- renovated it two years ago so from scratch so i made sure we had um i had to buy 16 radiators for the house which i had to choose and buy myself and i have a developer knowledge for um a, you know heating output per room and stuff like that so i made sure it's all fine oh really what you've got an app that what can you control it each room's temperature yeah stuff? it's the um, there is like a, I can't remember the measurement, but you look at, uh, this is really geeky, but you look at uh, how many uh, sides of the wall face outside, basically, and the size of the room in cubic meters and what kind of windows you have. And then you make a measurement and then you buy a radiator that has the output. <laughs> we can wow. talk about radiators if you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I, I, I had to develop a certain knowledge for radiators and damp. We had lots of damp. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, my wife's obsessed with that as well, actually. And she loves home stuff. We're trying to get quotes from like builders at the moment. Honestly, this one builder, she's been trying to get a quote from for like a year. I'm like, I'm like, there are other builders. It's like ridiculous. Yeah, they're expensive now. It's uh, we were lucky that we did in twenty twenty. Um, um, I mean, it was hard over lockdown, but it, it was a lot cheaper. Oh, really? Has it has it gone a lot more? I was going to read about because you say on your site, your bio, that you're into home renovations. You've done you've done quite a few, haven't you? I've done yeah, I've done two, but the first one was over five years because we didn't have the money to do it in one go. So we right. never really got to enjoy the house because by the time we finished, we sold it. Um, but this one was completely unlivable, so we did it in one go, and um, it was stressful because it was over the winter lockdown. Oh, um, yeah. So I had to make some choices blind, effectively, because I couldn't go to shops and and uh, showrooms, and that shows <laughs> so, so some some bits. I'm like, uh, I wish I. Could oh really? <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it's fine. That's cool. Did you do some of the? I, I don't know. We're talking. I find it interesting. Everyone's like, "Where's the photography?" Yeah, I love, I've been talking that? about innovation for ages. I love it. <laughs> um, do you watch like Homes Under the Hammer? I do watch that, and I watch Grand Design, and oh, Grand yeah. Designs is my dream to do a Grand Design. With, oh yeah. I, I love Kevin McLeod as my <laughs> celebrity crush. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> it's a bit old for me now. <laughs> That's funny because I sometimes ask people their celebrity crushes. So you you pre that one. <laughs> is um Grand Designs is that still going? Do they still do new episodes? Yeah, yeah it's still going. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I remember watching some of those a while ago. I'm 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 just I have to say I'm really not into homes and stuff, you know. But my wife is the opposite. She just absolutely loves it. So we're always like she's want yeah. always wants to talk about indoor design and stuff. And I'm like, you should get your wife to call me because I'll be very up for talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll do it. She'd love that. <laughs> she would love it. Um, and how's how's things in general with you, though? Has it been a decent start to the year? Did you have a nice Christmas and uh, New Year? Yes, yes, it was fine. So we, uh, Christmas, uh, you know, as you can tell from my accent, I'm Italian, but we spent Christmas in here. So my, my husband is British. Oh, cool. And we went to the in-laws and that was fine. And then uh, we went to uh, France for New Year's Eve with a... Um, 
five other families. We oh, wow. rented the chateau. Um, there were 24 of us and a dog. And um, wow. it was um, fantastic photo opportunities for me, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So, that's awesome. Are they like friends, uh, families or friends, like, yeah. Um, yeah, friends. Wow. Yeah, it was really good fun. All in and one then, place? All in one place, yeah. Yeah, that sounds like carnage to me. Did did you take a lot of photos? Did you do like? I did, like... I did. Yeah, um, um, I did. Uh, it was actually um, a really good fun because I, I'm a bit. It's, it's like a lot of people. I, I I document my family, but I'm a bit bored. Yeah. <laughs> so anytime I have the opportunity of you know taking photos of other children that I'm allowed to, I've got permission to, um, not just yeah. random in the street, then I'm really happy to. Oh, that's cool. I bet the, the other families love that as well. You'd be able yeah, to no, give, yeah. That's all cool. Well, good, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, and you mentioned there how you are Italian then. I, I read, did you come over to England when you were like 23? Just for, yes. it's just going to be a bit of work experience or something. And you've ended up like kind of staying? Yeah, so, um, so I graduated in Italy. Um, I did a degree in philosophy, which is, you know, again, nothing to do with photography. But... <laughs> um, <laughs> And then I, I came to, to London just like, uh, you know, um, a lot of uh, European like immigrants that is not longer possible now because of Brexit, but at the time it was. Um, so I worked, um, I, I didn't really speak English, so I worked in um, in the hospitality sector just as a waitress um, mm -hmm. and had a great time, really. Um, so I did that for nearly two years and and then I um, I just moved on. To, I just had, <laughs> had to have a proper job. So um, I moved on to a kind of corporate job. But yes, I, I moved into London thinking I will stay here for three months and then just never came back and never went back to Italy. <laughs> That's cool though. God, do, do you not do you not miss Italy though? I mean, the weather is very very different. I do. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I do miss Italy, and um, it, you know, yeah, of course. Um, I actually get really nostalgic watching, um, you know, anything on TV that has Italy in, in it. I don't know if you've been watching The White Lotus, but season oh. two is Italy, and it's like oh. Oh uh, really? Is it good? I've heard of that. That's it's, it's yes. Is it really good? Yeah, I need to check that out. I'm not going to say anything, but it's brilliant. Oh, that's cool. Um, uh, yeah, well, it's quite it's quite different though. The food as well. I mean, I've only been to Italy like a couple of times, and only once as an adult. And it's just I've just went to Rome for a few days. It's magical, it. and I so love it there. Whereabouts in Italy are you from? So I'm from the north, from uh, near the Alps, and um, I grew up in a tiny village, uh, so not from any some kind of famous uh, touristy destination. I'm from a wine region, so I'm very lucky that <laughs> I have access to nice wines. Uh, nice. But, um, but yeah, so I, I do miss it, and with the food, because um, I think when I moved to London in, was it 2005, it was quite hard to find good ingredients and you know nice kind of restaurants but now like i should enjoy the variety here and i was really fussy um when i first moved here i would only eat italian food and i'm glad i kind of broadened my horizons. oh really were you that's funny <laughs> yeah i was so fussy are you are you into your cooking and yes yeah yeah but i'm do not you make proper uh, proper italian dishes I do, yeah, but I'm not. I cannot say I'm like an amazing chef. Um, but I, I like it. Funny, relaxing. I like cooking. That's cool as well. Yeah, I, I quite like it. I don't, when I say cooking, my honestly, my repertoire is limited to about four different dishes and the what? most basic <laughs> things. <laughs> honestly, some ultra basic. But I do all the cooking. Peas and toast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's one of the four. That's one of the four. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly I like you say I find it quite relaxing but my but conversely my wife finds it very stressful also I, I guess that's why I do it all actually the cooking um but, I, I find it yeah I find it relaxing um but yeah I cannot claim I'm an expert or like an experienced <laughs> chef um well I'm sure you're much better than me I'm sure you're much better than me. <laughs> I don't was it reason, but... <laughs> um was it was it was it love then that kept you in London was it love if you if my husband is listening yes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> no it was it was I met, I met my 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 now husband um just over a year after I moved to London and um uh, that's it the rest of history so we 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 got together stayed together got married had two children and um and so that I'm obviously settled here um we would have loved to spend some time um outside of the UK but I think because of covid and you know schools and everything uh, it's just a bit hard now 
Mm. But we would have loved to do that. Did you get married in England or in Italy? Or? We got married in Italy um, oh, wow. cool. in 2011 uh, in my, my village. Um, yes, right. it was a good wedding. Did you have an Italian wedding photographer? Oh, God, don't talk to me about the photographer. So I uh, I did, but I made a huge mistake. So um, I hired a photographer who was really popular um, uh, back in the day. So like not at the time, but, you know, like uh, 20 years ago, something like that. Yeah. It was really popular, but it was it, it was. Um, um, a, it was not documentary style and he uh, I want a documentary style f- photographs and he, he just couldn't do it like a lot of the photos are basically just like they, they look really random there is there are lots of photos of um, that just not great <laughs> I don't know how to explain no, it um, he was, he's, I think his skills were into like more the post portraits and that kind of right, yes that kind of photography and we didn't want that at all um we have um so now we don't have any portraits like zero because i didn't want them oh. not even family uh, and the ones that we have um are just not that great <laughs> so oh no that's such a shame that's such a shame but it's a good it's a good uh, lesson for me really to you know if i had to hire a photographer again to be way more thorough <laughs> That is true, isn't it? Yes, that is true. I, I totally get that. I mean, and a similar story when I got married, married actually, in that um, my wife's parents were kind of, they, to be honest, they were like paying for it all. We were very lucky, you know, and, and they right. kind of, they kind of found this photographer and we were just very grateful. They were, they were paying for things. You know, I wasn't a photographer back then as well. So, no, okay. you know, no, and we didn't feel like we could you know turned down their offer of, of a photographer as well and stuff and and he was very kind of traditional classic and so he was like getting my wife to do all kind of awkward kind of posing oh, you know and yeah. so yeah and it comes across in the photos you know we both look very awkward and stuff and there's not many uh kind of documentary captures it is it is a bit of a shame but um yeah i couldn't yeah. say no when your parents are paying for it all as well so. yeah and also it's like it's in a way you as a wedding photographer is a good story really because you can just show how <laughs> how important it is to you know, find the right match. That is true. Yes, that mm-hmm. is so true. So true. Yeah, no, and, it's not wedding photos. They're awful. <laughs> <laughs> I won't include any on the blog post that accompanies this uh, this, this <laughs> podcast. <then. laughs> no, so Francesca, how did you how did you get into photography? You know, mm-hmm. uh, in the first place. So I read. You know, you've been surrounded with photography from an early age. Is that right? And your dad yeah. have a like a makeshift dark room. Yeah. So my dad. It, it's, it comes from my dad, really. So my dad is um, he's retired now, and he was a primary school teacher, but so you know, not not, not a photographer, mm-hmm. but he's always been very creative. And he is he was uh, you know at the time he was really into photography. So he had a, I think it was a Yashica, uh, the um, not the SLR, SLR. <laughs> um, and. He, he he just was into it, so he had a dark room in, a, in we had a kind of storage bit under the roof, basically it was very tiny. Um, so he made a dark room in there, and I'd just been used to him uh, taking like, photos really, and still he has hundreds of them, uh, more probably, and um, so I asked for my first camera. But when I was about 10, I've asked for a camera and I got a Polaroid. <laughs> um, yes. It was a Christmas present. And I, I was really, really happy, really. And I, since then, I, I like many, many, you know, people who ended up being a photographer. I had many cameras. I always took one with me on trips, school trips. Um, and I've always been the one with the camera. Um, and then as I was getting older and had a bit more disposable income, I started sort of buying better things and having a bit more fun. Cool. Yeah, I get that. Totally get that. Um, yeah, and when did everyone basically? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. Yeah. Um, um, but how did you specifically get into the like the family documentary? And when yeah. did that begin? Was it with the, the birth of your own children? Yeah, I, I kind of, I've been thinking about that question. So I... Um, Yes, so obviously with the the having the kids um, 
you know, the photography the kids, that's how I got into it. But um, I didn't know at the time that I was taking that approach. So um, when I look at my uh, photos of the kids when they were little, I was trying to, I was, I was trying to do the documentary style. So, um, but I didn't really get it right. So, for example, um, you know, there were my photos just didn't have enough information to to make them documentary style, but I was trying to do it. Um, I didn't know it was a genre until um, 2019, basically, when I started connecting online on Facebook and Instagram, and I saw um, I saw I saw you named as a family documentary, and I was exactly. like, ah. Oh, that is, that's exactly what I'm trying to do badly. <laughs> um, but what? yes, so yeah, naturally I tried, but yeah, I, it's only until much later that I discovered it exists as a genre. That is actually a genre. Oh, I get that. Yeah, I get that. And when you were saying, because it's quite interesting, you said a bit, a bit earlier there how there wasn't kind of enough information in the images right. for it to be good. What do you mean? Like maybe not enough storytelling within a single frame or like, <laughs> like lots of headshots and things? Or Yeah, so things like... Um, so um, I used to shoot with a 50 millimeters and like 1.8 and I, I was I will always go for 1.8 which is now I think a bit silly for what I was trying to do and so there's no information in the background but also like um, uh, yes I was just going a little bit too close but without any you know I like close up photos but the ones I was trying to do, they were just didn't make any sense. So there was like, I got I got one of my uh, uh, baby who was like eight months old playing with a toy, and I really liked his fat hand. Mm. And, but I just took a photo of the fat hand rather than the fat hand in the contest of what he was doing. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so now sense. I end up with this photo that doesn't really tell me a story. I know the story, but it it just doesn't tell it does that make sense mm, totally oh i totally get it yeah that's such a huge part of what we do in, whether that's mm. in family or weddings that kind of storytelling within a single image and as you say context is so so important isn't it oh it's cool yeah. though and but you're, you're totally rocking it now and you so <laughs> yesterday um so we're, we're recording this on yeah it's the 9th of february and yesterday we released the first collection of the family awards and mm -hmm. you won two in one collection which is awesome isn't it? an individual and a story so congratulations Thank on you. that um so cool and one yeah the story award um is so good in particular i think i just love it because i mean it's so hard to win a story award. it's so hard to win an individual but the story awards especially i think are even more difficult um, <laughs> it makes me even happier to oh yeah it. totally oh it totally is because i think you know with documentary obviously the, the the best photographers do get loads of individual images but you can also be sometimes be lucky with individual captures but you can't be lucky with um, a story war because it's you know it's consistent it's consistency it's creativity over 15 to 20 images so I mean, it has to be really really good you know really good <laughs> Okay, um, but yeah so that's awesome anyway sorry just, just complimenting you a lot there but um, <laughs> <laughs> but that story in particular I just think it's really cool it's um can you tell us more about it it's a vacation story isn't it and it yes, was it's a, yeah. the photographer that whose family you're photographing is a brilliant family documentary photographer herself yes, uh, Russia, yeah <laughs> yeah I know Lisa Lisa Winner who I've actually interviewed on the podcast uh, before as well so yeah was it extra pressure shooting for another you know documentary family photographer and how did that come about it was in London wasn't it yeah so in London so she in one of the Facebook groups I can't remember which one she she mentioned that she was coming to London with her family and was looking for a photographer so I I um, I'm I'm well, I'm still portfolio building, and sure. I always wanted to do. I've been thinking about offering vacation shoots in London as part of my uh, packages. Um, yeah. So I asked that she would be up for me, you know, uh, doing it for her, um, and she said yes. Um, and that was brave so to put yourself up for. It's brave to do that, I think, to put yourself up for another kind of like photographer as well. No, we're not scared. Yes, of course. Yeah, I was really scared. Like, I, um, I, I was. In, the truth is, I was terrified. And um, up to the point, I actually met Lisa in person. She, she was. She, she really put me at ease. Um, but I, I, I absolutely felt the pressure of. Um, of doing this for another photographer, especially someone like Lisa, was amazing, and. Um, but yes, I think 
I felt comfortable as soon as I met her and I met her family. Obviously, her family are used to having that the, the, have done done before for them, and not just Lisa taking photos of the of the, her own family, but also other photographers. Uh, right. Um, yeah, that must have helped so, a bit for them too. Yeah. So that that helped because they they were absolutely relaxed around me, and um, I was yes, I was I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I get that, Francesca. Totally understand that. I totally understand that. You know, I've um, I've I've done a few weddings for wedding photographers, and that makes me extra scared as well. So yeah, I totally. Yeah, get, yeah. Totally I was feeling a bit sick before. Oh, 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 really? Yeah, I get that. I totally understand. I totally understand. <laughs> um, and you didn't have you didn't have the best of weather by looks of it as well from some no. other photos. No. no, it was raining. Um, it was kind of UK style rain, so on and off. So there were bits where. You know, we had a few few minutes of sun, and and then no, mainly it was raining. But I think I think the the rain obviously made the condition the shooting conditions hard. But I think it became part of the story. So all the umbrellas, you know, the kind of discomfort maybe of mm-hmm. being rained on. Um, so in a way, it, it, I feel in hindsight, it kind of like helped with the story a bit. Oh well, um, yeah, I understand that, and it's typically British vacation yes, as well. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I love in that series of images, you've captured like all the elements, like the you know the boredom as well, the yawns, the tiredness, um, <laughs> as well as the joys and laughs and smiles. It's it's so good. It's so good, Francesca. Oh, thank really you. Good. It was really good fun, and you know, uh, you know, credit to Lisa for for you know being so kind of letting me do as I said letting me play because it was my first time doing a vacation shoot and I felt the pressure and I wanted to give her good photos really well you definitely did and they're award-winning photos now so I'm really happy about that <laughs> no it's so cool how long um how long were you with them for on the day then yeah about six hours um a long time so, yeah about six hours it, it was uh, things like learning points for me is that we, you know, it, it, it takes more than you think to do things, uh, you know, in terms of walking around and, you know, so, um, but, so we, uh, that, that, but yeah, six hours and we, we, we went for a walk around Buckingham Palace, um, stopped around and um, she also got some f- more t- traditional family portraits which i think is is completely appropriate if you're on a holiday yeah sure um and and then yeah as you can see we went for lunch and then we were walking very cool yeah did you advise on like where to go or was you just yes, following them yeah, did. yeah. Oh, that's good as well because you have that knowledge don't you as well yeah i mean i've got a few things wrong i have a really bad sense of direction <laughs> <laughs> the fact that i've been living in london for like 18 years or whatever um but yes I, I because because it's something that i'm thinking about offering to um as, uh, um, as a package mm. i think it, it again i wanted to test my own knowledge and you know stimulate simulate a client experience so i did i did give her i did give her some tips on where to go yeah i think that's great today. Mm. And and as you say, thinking of offering it as a proper kind of package, I think that's um, yeah, a really, really good idea, especially with that kind of inside, like, eight, did you say, yeah, how long have you been in London, like 18 years or so? 18 years, I think. And, I, and you know, the, the other worry about the vacation shoot is that I was worried that, worried that I wouldn't enjoy it. Uh, because mm. it's, the London is quite full on, it's quite hectic, as you, we all know. Mm. But I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And that's to me, is a sign that um, I should think about it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. As you say, especially as you love it, and you're so good at it, and you're already an award-winning vacation photographer from your first vacation I story. That now, I? Yeah, no, you can. <laughs> you got to. We've got to push ourselves as much as possible. I think you know, promote ourselves <laughs> as much as possible. But it's it's true though as well. Um, yeah, no, that's cool. Six hours is a long time. I mean, that's like almost some wedding coverage is like six hours as well. So yeah, and it felt it went really quickly. I I wasn't I. I I wasn't even that like hungry. Normally, I, I, on a normal day, I have to eat about six times a day. I just, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I just, but it was fine. It was it was brilliant. I was completely in the zone, and um, it was. It, I really enjoyed it. 
that's cool cool do you how did you approach it you know were you were you talking with the family a lot or were you quieter you know how, how did you approach it in that way <laughs> what do you think <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i was talking <laughs> yeah well they um, look totally at ease in your presence though as well you know, from the images it looks like you're you know they're totally just not noticing you there. used to it as well and like the, the children in particular they were i felt like at some point i was like are you okay for me to be so close but they they completely i mean because of obviously lisa um uh, they're completely completely used to it i i i think one of the reason why i want to do this professionally is that um as part of my i, I have a, another job and as part of that job i used to have clients and i don't have that i don't do clients anymore right. and i really miss that i really miss kind of learning about them and you oh, know okay. it's a kind of aspect of getting to know someone that is not within your immediate circle mm-hmm. um so that's why i tend to chat to <laughs> to, to, to them um, well, that, that's good though it puts people at ease as well it's it would have been str- it's stranger if you're just there in their presence and you're like totally silent i think yeah i don't think like i've done other shoots and i, I always chat and i chat to the children um i mean not not constantly but i try to <laughs> interact <laughs> No, that's cool. And does Lisa does Lisa know yet that it's uh, her? Yes, know, yes, her, yes, her, yes, her, her yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll send her a WhatsApp. Oh, that's cool. Good. I love that. This is really, this is really cool. It's cool. Yeah, cool. I'm really happy. Thank you. Oh, no. Well, congrats. Yeah, it's a super work. <laughs> I saw and I was going to ask you because you mentioned actually about discovering maybe like the DFP kind of um, community in like 2019 on Instagram and yeah. socials and stuff. And I noticed when you posted on your um, Instagram about the story awards, um, you got you had loads of really lovely comments from other documentary family photographers. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you enjoy that kind of the community aspect of it all? Oh, absolutely. Um uh, this is the community aspect is actually quite recent for me. Uh, I um, um, I'm quite um, connected with the Made for Documentary community, which is um, has been set up by Emma Collins, Alice Chapman, and um, Antonina Mamzenko. Uh, yeah. Um, and I did a couple of courses with them, uh, which uh, with with other fo- documentary photographers. So that's when it started for me in terms of getting to know other photographers oh, more cool. directly and better rather than just like you know messaging online like i love your photos and oh, um, yeah. so so that that's how it started for me in terms of getting more involved in the community Ah, uh, that's cool was that did you have like group like zooms and things or did you meet up in the flesh as well or yeah so no the the courses are online but we, we i've met some of them in the flesh in london or yeah that's cool. That's cool. And I, we recently met. I didn't get to talk much, did we, about the, uh, <laughs> at the uh, the TIR and TIRF Christmas party? Yeah, in London. Did you enjoy it? Sorry? Uh, did you enjoy yeah, it? No, really, yes. I did. We actually walked past the boat with Lisa on the day and on the day of the shoot, the vacation oh. shoot. I was like, that's where it happened. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that's very weird. Small, you, uh, small world. Yeah. Did you notice the boat move on the night? Uh. W- what? No, no. <laughs> no just, I did, well, it didn't change location, but I mean, just like rock a bit. Did you notice it? Did you feel it? Uh, I mean, I had a couple of beers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I re- honestly, yeah, it probably was for me as well. But I, 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 numerous times throughout the night, I felt it move, and it made me feel like nauseous really instantly. It was really, I'm never doing a party on a boat again. I think that was a silly, silly idea. It was yeah. a brilliant party, though. I hope you let you do it again. No. Oh, we will. No, thank you. We will. Yeah, it was. It was really fun. It was really fun. Really fun. We should do it in Cornwall sometime, but I don't think we get as many people coming to Cornwall. I think. Do you ever come <laughs> yeah, down? Really yeah. I do you ever come down? Do you? Yeah, in Cornwall, yes. So uh, we not not. I uh, haven't been down there for a, a, a while, but when the kids were, you must know this place, the Watergate Bay. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah nice. So when the kids were little, um, before they started school, we we had a couple of holidays there. It's a bit expensive to go in, in during school holidays. Yeah, but gosh. It's one of our favourite places to stay. Um, oh, that's got in the Watergate Bay Hotel itself. Yeah. Or? Yeah. yeah oh cool yeah i've shot a wedding there i've done a workshop there as well actually it's Thank lovely you. Place. Oh, God, amazing i love that place yeah um, cool. and i've been to i'm really bad with geography so but i have been in other places in cornwall <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> i'm with you there as well though. i'm awful with geography i still almost need a sat now to go to st ives it's only like half an hour away so yeah <laughs> 
totally get that totally get that um we did a fa- I've, I, we've been on one family uh holiday to london which we did a couple of years ago which was fab we should have had should have got in touch with you then you know i, I still never had my family photographed by another I photographer think, yeah I, I i'm the same with with my um i think the, i think the I would have. Lo- I would love to have a photographer on on part of our holidays, just because. Um, obviously, I'm never in the photo, and mm. I'm presumably similar for you. And yeah. I don't know if your wife is also a photographer, but right. um, um, just the aspect of like always being three people and not four. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so all my family true. photos, and it's like I've never been there. Um, mm. Is that like your but, dad's? Presumably, not in many of the old photos. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And there's that. And also, I'm a big believer, again, of, um, you know, we, we talk about the documentary approach. And, I, you know, I, th- I think if you look at family holidays online, like on Instagram or what people share, they only share the, like, the, the happy bits. But the reality of going, as we all know, going on holiday with more children or with children or teenagers, any, any, any children, any, any age, is actually quite tough. Mm-hmm. And I quite like those memories as well. They're part of the holiday. Mm, and um, I think it's just nice to have them like, it's, it's like it balances out your yeah. family album, basically. Well, that's so true. Uh, you say it's real life. They're real, real moments. And, and you captured those. I think and just, just to go back to that vacation story you did there, as I said, you captured those. Not, you know, your story's not all like, big hijinks on the London Eye or anything like that you know you've got like proper yawns and people look <laughs> really tired <laughs> like, it's tiring though to be like in in central London and oh, that's yeah. the experience that you know most people have really because yeah. it's it's hectic um and obviously Lisa got uh, other you know in the in what I've delivered to her in the gallery she's got other other photographs that as I said uh, you know show different angles but I um I want in that in that story, I also wanted to show sort of the little gestures of affection, you know, like when Lisa was hugging her son, um, and yes, it's it's tiring. <laughs> that's the truth. Yeah. And it's the truth, as you say. That's what it's about. That's what about documentary photography is about. Is is the truth? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so cool. So cool. And um, people oh. listening now, do head to this reportage or this reportage family dot com, and I'll include the uh, the story award that Francesca just spoke about uh-huh. there in full as well. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, let's let's change tack, Francesca. I know you did mention you've you've listened to a few episodes before. So do you, do you, do you have a clue what I might be able to might be asking you next? Oh God, I know I can't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well it is going to be. Do you watch much telly or movies? Oh, you do? Okay, that's good. That's good. Is, is, is this a quiz? Yes, it is. It's the quiz. Oh, it's a... I know. <laughs> well, I clearly never listened to that point. <laughs> no, maybe you haven't. Maybe you've listened to older episodes. I've been, I think for the last year or so, I've been doing just a little, for fun, little quiz. So it's no prize, I'm afraid. But You know, I'm absolutely rubbish at quizzes, yeah? That, yeah, everybody says that. Everybody says that. <laughs> and names and names. Okay, well, we'll try yeah good we'll try it we'll try it there no, good that's good so if um yeah anyone's listening for the first time as well um i'm gonna ask francesca um some i'm gonna read out some synopses of like maybe a series or a movie oh and God, yeah. yeah we're gonna see if you can get the get the title are you up for that then yes <laughs> okay okay yeah okay okay let's do it okay so this this i know totally random but it just kind of mixes up the podcast flow okay okay so this first one is a series and it's quite a recent one okay so Mm. smart sarcastic and a little dead inside wednesday adams investigates a murder spree while making new friends and foes at nevermore academy did I? I don't really watch series apart from the White Lotus. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only one. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. Oh, it's uh, uh it's. I give you a clue. Uh, you a clue. It's well, it's like um, it's a name of an Adams family character. It's on Netflix. Oh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes. yes. Oh. Boom. There you go. Yes. But is it about the Adams family? Well, no. it's, it's, yeah, they're all in it. I think I've only seen like a couple of episodes, but it does focus it's on. It's an her. adult series, or is it? Well. Trash? It's kind of like, I reckon it's aimed at like 15 and above age. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite popular though. My 11 year old daughter really wants to watch it. Um, right. I'm going to have to take note of that. 
Yeah, it's done, I think it's done well on Netflix, but I know it's going to be another series. But oh God, this is going to go bad. No, don't worry. So I, <laughs> I was interviewed on someone else's podcast recently, and he did it with me, and I got none out of three. So oh, okay, fine. Okay. There is no high bar. Do not worry. There's no high bar. Okay, so this next one is an old movie, which is probably about okay. 20 years old, actually. Okay. Okay. Okay, so a, fri- a frightened, withdrawn Philadelphia boy who communicates with spirits seeks the help of a disheartened child psychologist. I know that one is like the one that this, yeah, like, is the guy that says, I see dead people. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know the title, though. Oh, no, I'm, I, I wouldn't remember it as well, I think. Yeah, it's with um, Bruce Willis as well. Yes, um, I know which one, but I don't remember that. I've seen it. Okay, I, I know you know it because you gave the quote as well. So it's um, the sixth sense. The sixth oh yes, it is the sixth sense. Yes, yes. Yeah. But but I, I remember that. Seen it. Oh yes, it's good, isn't it? I remember it. Yeah, it's good. This is murder written on like the wrong way around. Is that right? Oh, I don't know. It's been so long since I've seen it now. Yeah. Good film. Yes, that was good. It was good. Um, I, I kind of give you that one, Francesca, and you knew it. Thank you. Can't, you. I that's that one and a half out of three at the moment. This year. Um, let's go for your third one, then. This one is, I always do a, a much more difficult one as a third one. Oh, so, God. yeah. <laughs> so, this one is it's like a documentary series, and on, on, it's on Netflix as well. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, this documentary captures the extraordinary twists and turns in the journeys of Rubik's Cube solving champions Max Park and Felix Zemdigs. Okay, it's uh, I haven't I know which one you're talking about, but I haven't watched it. I really like documentaries actually, and, but no, I haven't watched that one, so I can't remember the title. Oh, okay, yeah, but yeah, I think yeah, you do know what it is. Um, it's um, it's called the Speed Cubers. It's so good, honestly. It's is one of the it? best. Doc- yeah, it's really, really good. Yeah, really recommend it. Speaking really- of good, I mean, we watch. I, I, I have really bad memories for names, so um, I, I I would like to recommend here some good documentaries on Netflix, but I can't remember the title. <laughs> I can't remember the title. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be like, uh. yeah. But um, I, I really like uh, me and my husband. Like we we have different tastes on uh, TV, but one thing that we both enjoy, it, apart from four in a bed, which is <laughs> oh, is that like the B and B thing? Yes. Yes, I like that as well. That's great, apart isn't it? That, um, we also enjoy um, documentaries. Um, on um I, you know which goes with the fact that i like documentary in general <laughs> oh that's cool yes i get that yeah me and my wife we like that as well have you seen that um my was it called my octopus friend that documentary with the guy who formed that relationship with an octopus no but okay. <laughs> honestly <laughs> honestly it's it's magic he goes out swimming in the same bit of water like every day for like six months or so and forms his proper friendship with an octopus and honestly oh, it's, it's, i'm gonna it's watch that yeah, honestly, so good, Cupid. so good. <laughs> oh, four in a bed, that is good though. Yeah, I love that kind of thing. So my TV, if you ask me something like about trash TV, maybe I'll be able to answer, but yeah. <laughs> you, do, you watch, do you watch Love Island? I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so do I, it's so good. Have you been watching this series at the moment? Is he on? Uh, we watch it like we. I watch it with the guy with. La, is he last year with Luca? The is he Luca? Oh yes, it was. was wasn't Italian. It? It's not Luca, isn't it? I think there was a Luca. Yeah, there was a Luca. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but it, I didn't know it was on. Clearly not. But normally we watch it. Oh, but you're not watching this series now, no. Uh, because we're on. As I said, we're we're on the White Lotus. I I, I don't really like TV like I'm on and off. So um, I'm not like I'm not an expert basically. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm 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 glad that you watch Love Island because most people I mention Love Island on this, they either don't admit that they watch it or they just say they don't watch it. But yes. Yeah, I mean, I, we we went a bit off it last year. Was it? Yeah, last year when there was a. Is it? I can't remember. With it was with a uh, uh, David Day and Akin Sue. David Day, not Luca. Yes, David Day. Yeah. That's no, right. but there was Luca as well. There was Luca. Uh, there was. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we got off it a little bit, but. um um but yeah we used to watch it and i think the apprentice is on at the moment again i'm a bit do you watch the apprentice i used to watch it yeah i used to watch it i used to, i find that really interesting actually but i've not watched the last few years is it all no. the same but do they still yeah. do the same kind of tasks they do the same task but also i think it got a little bit tacky now because of you know the way the show is like 
businessmen and businesswomen or like the, all the girls that have like bodycon dresses, high heels. I think after mm. COVID, that's not how women in business look like anymore. Right. Um, sure. mm. So it's it's just not. It, it, it's really just for entertainment. Um, right. Yeah. It sounds like you like reality TV in general, though. <laughs> I mean, I do watch, as I said, I'm not a, a um, massive fan of TV, so I'm not like an expert, let's put it that way. But yes, I like some trash stuff as well. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> so do I. I love it. I Honestly, I love reality TV. I just, I generally find it more interesting than scripted stuff. I just find it really interesting, reality TV. Yeah, it's interesting indeed. And some, some are better than others. So I think I, I, one of the reasons why we have watched Love of Island is because it's a little bit more... It, it, there isn't much drama compared to like the Geordie show. <laughs> oh, cool, yeah. Or like, uh, yeah, the, those kind of like reality. It's actually quite okay. It's quite uh, positive, I think, yes. you know, compared to others. That is true. Yeah, there is. That's true. Although there's been a bit of drama this series, uh, Francesca. I mean, been. I need to catch up then. I think it's because we're watching other things at the moment. But um, I will I will tell my husband that we need to go on Love Island again. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay um that was a nice little so i enjoyed that tv channel let's uh, let's go back to um photography francesca and um so i know you've been into photography for quite a long time i think you're you're just kind of at the beginning stage of making it a business aren't you yeah yeah. yeah, so I was just going to ask, because I'm sure, you know, lots of people listen to the podcast at all different stages of career and stuff, so that I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who are just kind of starting the business side of it as well. So, yeah, I was just going to ask you how, how are you finding it? You know, how is it? Are you, do you enjoy this kind of business side of it as well? Oh, such a good question. So, um, uh, yes and no, in the sense that I, I pick up my camera less now that I'm focusing on other things. Um, and that I really miss uh, and I'm hoping that once I have things up and running then obviously we'll, I will obviously shoot again and, and be paid for it yeah. but um, I, re I miss shooting and I'm worried sometimes that the business stuff will take away the joy of shooting which is what I enjoy right mm -hmm. um, but we'll see. But the yes part is I, I, I like learning new things and I am obviously I have a whole new world opening in front of me of like frames and prints and papers and websites and, and I'm a bit of a geek. So for me, it's like learning all this stuff is actually quite good fun. I don't find it too stressful. Oh, that's good. Um, I like spreadsheets so that's oh do you good. really you actually <laughs> like them that is good skill to have that is. <laughs> um and um you know so yeah it's, it's it's not too bad my as i said my only my only worry is that uh it will take away some of the joy and um and I know it has happened, I don't know about you Alan but it does happen occasionally for photographers who do it professionally yeah, and I, I totally understand how that can happen. I think I'm lucky in the fact that I enjoy the bit. I do enjoy the business side as well. Right. You know? Yeah, I, I do. I enjoy the kind of, yeah, all aspects of it, to be honest. So I guess I'm lucky yeah. that way. Yeah, because I and know there are. It's so good for me as well. I'm actually, I'm enjoying it as well. It's, it's more like something I'm mindful of uh, for the future to just make sure I, I get enough opportunities just to play. Yes. And, you know, I'd be creative and so I, I try to do courses when I can, like creative, more creative stuff, because um, um, just to keep me like keep the creative angle yeah. going, really. No, I get that. And it's cool that you're mindful of that that possible mm -hmm. situation as well. So I think because you're mindful of it, it's very unlikely to happen. I think, no, as well. I, hope so. I mean, so far, it's great. I mean, I'm, as I said, I'm enjoying the business angle and I talk I like talking about it and I like thinking about strategies and <laughs> um, oh that's very cool yeah do yeah. you have like a kind of like um business plan you know business plan like like business goals and things yes I do yeah I have you know when I thought I have I have my pricing done which I haven't so those is, is there when I'm ready to go but in whilst doing that I kind of had to think about like you know like yes I, I think about planning around the future in the next two years really because mm. that's uh, kind of my launching schedule is within the next year or so um yeah, yeah I do that and, yeah. and I keep an open mind 
that's cool do you have an idea yet on how you're gonna how are you gonna really get those couples are you gonna you know put a lot into social media have you got do you gonna do do you know much about seo and stuff are you gonna do yeah, that no, that's all? another thing i need to learn so i'm yeah. as i said i'm giving myself um a, about a year uh, to fully launch the business and but i'm planning to soft launch in autumn in the autumn around that late summer depending on holidays and things and the the reason why i'm sort of stretching that timeline is so that i have time to build up the kind of mailing list uh, mm-hmm. kind of increase my exposure on social media talk to people and in the area that i live so it's a combination of social media mailing list and just talking to <laughs> to um, my ideal clients, which are parents in, in, in the area where I live. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, that all makes sense. Totally. That's all cool. Oh, so if you say is there anything here <laughs> <laughs> you think it doesn't make any sense, please. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's all good. Um, and I think, as you said as well, I mean, I, I, um, using marketing proactively for vacation photography could be really good. There must be people come to London from all over the world as well as within the UK. Okay. Don't they? So. Yeah, on that one. So one, one of my friends is a um, a private tour guide uh, in, in in London. So um, I've already contacted her. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I want to. I, I think you know with with the with the kind of offering. Um, I'm I'm focusing now more on the family documentary kind of sessions. Mm-hmm. Um, because I want to get those. Um marketed first so just because it just i find it easier to focus on one thing yeah, and then launch the other thing if that makes sense because yeah. it's, a, it's a different kind of marketing so to if i try to do both i won't I'm, I'm, you know the risk is that i just get lost yeah you can spread yourself too thinly can't you I think yeah. it's good to target yeah. on one things at, at a time no, that's a good idea mm. cool and is your um is your husband supportive of your your photography Yes, it really is. And, um, you know, <laughs> if, your husband, if my husband is listening, yes, you're very supportive. <laughs> no, it, it, it absolutely is. And um, I feel sorry for him sometimes because uh, I, I do talk about it a bit too much, perhaps. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I get that. Yeah, well. it's a bit of like an obsession sometimes. And no, but it, it is. So I, I'm lucky that. Um, I was able to, uh, as I said, I have another job. I was able to reduce my hours um, so that I can focus on this. So um, it, it's, it's, it's important, you know, it was important to me to, to have support at home with, and I have that. Uh, but yes, if anything, it's probably a bit bored of me talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, no, I'm not going to listen to this podcast. I'm, no. I listen to you at home all the I time. We will listen to this. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it's funny. Fun. You you've got to listen to it back you've got to listen to it back um but i understand why my wife doesn't listen to to the podcast anymore she listens to about the first 10 episodes and then she's like no no more more." which i get that because she's she's you know she has to put up with me in real life (laughs) same same my husband yeah (laughs) um francesca what is your do you have a favorite kind of lens for your documentary work or a favorite like focal length you know do you how do you yes again yeah. good question so I, I i i'm always undecided between a 36 and a 24 millimeter so i go between like i have phases when i prefer one over the other so at the moment i'm shooting with a 35 millimeter oh, cool um and what camera i have the canon r uh, r6 oh uh, cool nice i've never tried that yeah. is it is it is it nice yes I used to shoot. Are you a Canon shooter? I used to be, but then I went to Sony a few years oh, ago. Oh, you went to Sony. Um, I thought about Sony, but I didn't want to redo my entire yeah. year. Um, no, it's, it's it's brilliant. I used to shoot up to like a m- two months ago with a, um, a 6D Mark II. I don't know if you oh, yeah. know that camera. It's, it's like an entry-level full frame. Mm. Um, and so the difference is unbelievable. Um and uh, yeah, I love it. And so I, I, I have the 35 millimeters uh, lens for that. And at the moment, that's what I'm shooting with. But um, I prefer prime. Mm-hmm. Um, Why for you? Do you prefer prime? I, uh, I just think. Um, why do I prefer prime? I prefer in general, find the prime lenses. Uh, 
for me, I find them superior than zoom lenses. Mm-hmm. But that's my experience. But also, I I I, pref- I think if I if I know I'm shooting with a I, I just I just struggle with Zoom because then I, then I don't know what to do. If that makes sense because oh, I have like too many choices voice. and things. That's it, right? So it was hard for me to articulate it, but it's having that choice. Whereas with Prime, I have to move myself, mm, um, and I find that a bit easier. But I mean, saying that, when I did the vacation shoot, I used the twenty four seventy because uh, I needed that. It, it was more versatile. Uh, in that situation where I was like running ahead and sh- you know when they were walking etc mm. so if I had to do a vacation shoot and on my own holidays I take the 2470 okay yeah that makes that makes total sense what about another angle of your business you could like target you know going back to Italy and doing vacation shoots in Italy as well be like proper destination family photographer well that's a long-term dream <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean I see I know people who do that and I love, I would love to do destination vacation shoots, like, uh, you know, yeah. um, families who rent a villa for an occasion or, um, or whatever. Um, but again, it's a kind of, it's like a long term goal, uh, yeah. business goal. Yeah. That's cool to have the long term goals like that. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I think that's cool how you were proactive and already contacted like a tour guide friend. That is, that's a really good idea. I yeah, I gave her some photos for her website years ago. So we, you know, it's a kind of, it's a trading yeah. you know, favors to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's so important to do that kind of recipro- reciprocation, yeah. re- exactly, reciprocity. Exactly. What's the word? You know what I mean. You know what I mean. People yeah, know absolutely. What I mean. <laughs> um, Francesca, have you ever made any like really memorable mistakes or accidents? Oh on a shoot or business wise or oh uh, yeah uh <laughs> <laughs> and i think it's a good question i like that the fact that you asked this question because i think it's important to recognize that you know we only share our best stuff yeah um so totally. obviously every time i do a shoot i take loads and loads of really shit photos and <laughs> yeah. um, uh, trying to because I have something in mind and I try to, to, to take a photo and sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So um, so obviously that's standard, but mistake is, um, uh, I'm just trying to think about good mistakes that I can share. <laughs> good mistakes. <laughs> I just think like I've, I've, there was one shoot that I, I, I got the settings wrong, which is a really annoying mistake to make, like, getting your exposure wrong and not oh. realizing that was before i was using the r6 so okay. the way it looked on the lcd screen was okay but then when i started editing them it was it, the, the exposure was wrong basically well, and i had to compensate it with lightroom and it was incredibly frustrating because the time it took me to to fix that and I'm not happy with the fix oh so really okay I, think, um, yeah. I just think like try I, I tried to get things right in camera and I, I took a whole a whole scene basically completely wrong well I think we've all done that we everyone's listening again uh, oh, everyone's nodding so yeah. it, was, uh, it was basically under exposed um but it was indoors, so like and fixing that created lots of noise. Fixing the noise will create other issues, and then it was uh, yeah. so frustrating. Oh, I get that. I think the first time I tried to capture a first dance with off-camera flash, they were all really underexposed, and uh, that was a failure. And uh, but you know, the couple never said anything. You know, and I, I re- as you did, you recovered them as best you can and stuff. And it, it's all a learning process, though, isn't it? We all do stuff like that. We do. Yeah, and I think uh, you know, uh, uh, yes, so. Um, relying on the little screen was I should have just checked my exposure um, reading from the camera that's what I should have done but I relied on the little screen do you like shooting wise now do you shoot you know with the viewfinder or do you shoot using the screen I have a viewfinder I'm like a, I'm I quite like using the viewfinder unless I need you know if I'm shooting from above or something but right okay um, and but it's it's good to you know with the obviously with a mirrorless that you can check your exposure in real time. But I'm still trying to get it right in terms of using the camera reading, right? Um, okay. yeah. And 
And yeah, it was yeah, it was frustrating because I always obviously I shoot manual all the time, so to get it wrong is incredibly frustrating. Oh, uh, but as I say, happens to us all. Happens to us all. It's all it's all part of it, isn't it? All part of it. Um, let's do some other quick fire. Quick fire? Can't even talk, Francesca. <laughs> Can't even talk. Quick fire. Um, quick fire random questions. Um, let's do Perfect. yeah. Let's do. What was the best concert you've ever been to? Oh, um, U2 in Paris. Oh, wow. That does sound cool. Wow. Yeah, it sounds cool. But I tried again, like, I'm not cool. And um, no, it was um, <laughs> Free Kids, uh, 2009. Um, it, it, it was fun. It's huge. It's brilliant. Wow. That's cool. Who was supporting? Oh, God, I don't know. No. <laughs> no, I can't remember. <laughs> no, that's a random question, I guess. I, I just thought they'd have someone really good, maybe, because they were Probably. Well, yeah. I can't remember. No, but it was it was fun. Just Are you a big U two fan? I love U two. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a band I've never really listened to. Actually, I really like them. Yeah. yeah. But yes, that's the one. What? Sorry. That that, that would be the best concert. Oh, I have that does sound awesome. Just to specify. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but that's great. I mean, you two in Paris is a big deal. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, brilliant. Paris is I'm beautiful. I'm going to see Blood is here in oh, May. Oh, really? I didn't even know they're still going. They're still going. Yeah, they're going. I don't know. I think it's a Wembley. Oh, wow. Cool. That'd be great. You see? Who was supporting then? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> I have to check. I'm sure they'll have some good support acts as well. That's cool. Uh, were you? I remember all the um, kind of blur oasis thing when I was growing up. That rivalry. You, were you ever yeah. part of that? Were you? I, I was. A, I've always been a blur fan rather uh, than oasis. I mean, no, I like been oasis. As well. uh, okay. And I, I really liked uh, you know, the um, Gorillas. Uh, oh yes, the Damon Albarn side. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, another quick fire question then. Dad, what? When was the last time you left your phone at home? <laughs> oh God! I know. Uh, but, hang on. I think. I think it happened recently, actually. Um, oh really? Yeah, but basically never. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's not the answer you get from everyone. Like never. <laughs> yeah, totally. Honestly, totally. And it, but it's the same for me though. I I literally could not remember the last time I left my phone at home. At all. Yeah, we should do. Is it sad? Is it sad? It's That's really sad. sad. I, even like sometimes I leave my phone. And this is really bad. But I leave my phone in another room because I, 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 I you know, even now talking again about the business side I, I, I use Instagram a lot more because I'm trying to build up you know a bit more exposure and that's actually means that I'm on, it's, it's, again it's, it means I'm on my phone quite a lot more and um, mm. so I try to take breaks that's good and you actually sometimes leave it in a different room on purpose yeah yeah or, yeah, or do something else yeah that is a good idea to do it is a good idea and it because it, I mean, it just worries me. You know, my kids are um, 11 and 8 almost. I'm the same age as mine. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my daughter wants a mobile. And we're like, I, I don't want to give her one until she's like 16, honestly. Because I'm just so... <laughs> I'm not sure I know, how you manage that. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I won't, will I? I won't. But I just, it's so scary, that whole world of social media, let alone just the, the fact of them being on it all the time. But, mm. yeah. Ugh. Yeah, you're right. I had a thought the other day of... Um, so my son is also new. 11 and some of his mates have a phone because they walk to school by themselves mm. and they just stare at the phone and it, it, as as they walk and, it, and that made me quite sad because I thought as soon as I give a phone to my child it's never going to look look up anymore yeah basically. it's true and it didn't occur to me it's like it, it, it's, a, it's a bit of like sad thought but it's true yeah, it is. And it's a totally real sad thought, honestly, that, yeah, it is true. I don't know what we could do to mitigate it. I'm going to have to, you know, can you literally get kind of phones that as well don't have any access to any social media apps? But yeah, they'd be able sure. to work around it somehow, wouldn't they? Just by yeah. using like an internet browser and stuff. And it's just. I'm like, going oh. to, yeah, we, yeah, we need to work out some rules, but I'm trying not to think about it. But yeah, absolutely. So is um. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kind of looking forward to it, really. No, I get it. Will your son be starting secondary school this September? Yes, in September, yeah. Same as my daughter. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be a, a different kind of time, isn't it? Honestly, that's all, all our worries are there now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I totally get that. 
Oh, anyway, anyway, let's let's end on a let's end on a happier uh, happier yeah, note, <laughs> Francesca. So, um, I've just so enjoyed talking to you. So it's, it's been oh, almost you. an hour. Oh, I'm glad you've enjoyed it as well, and you've you've given yeah. such great advice and great stories. Honestly, thank you. It's been thank you for cool. inviting me. Oh, thank you for saying yes. Thank you for saying yes. Ah, Very cool. Sure. Very cool. <laughs> um, so let's end on let's end on a tip related question, Francesca. Um, what would be your top tip or top tips or any advice or any thoughts just to help someone become better at the documentary side of family photography what we do just any kind of ideas any tips what's any, yeah any advice from from you oh there's so many uh... <laughs> that's good that's good 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 <laughs> um so um the the i think the best one i've learned from doing a course with made a documentary called turning chaos into art um is about um looking at the frame so what you have at the edges of your frame um actually no that's that, that's more like a making your comp yeah well, no, sorry, let me start again. Well, it's still good advice, yeah, it's good advice. It's, it's a good advice, but I was thinking about, it's incredible advice in terms of when you are then looking at the photos you've taken in post-production, it's, it's the kind of cropping, mm -hmm. uh, which is important. But in terms of the documentary side, it's uh, narrowing, down your, narrowing down your aperture, I think, is something that I started doing only recently. And... Um, like I think many photographers who are new to documentary, we all start with very, we try the bokeh, <laughs> and, and it, I, I don't, I, I just don't think, I just think it's, it's it's a bit harder work to narrow down your aperture, but I think your images are just, they have way more detail and more of a story, more like adjectives as they call them, so that that would be the one. That's really good. Yeah, really good advice. And as obviously, well. a wide angle, slightly wider, wider angle lens. Um, so, you know, 35 or 24. Yeah. Um, so I gave a, I gave away my 85 and my 50. <laughs> gave them away? Well, really? Yeah. 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 Well, that's cool, though. It forces, I mean, it yeah, means, um, yeah. yeah. Full on documentary. <laughs> Yeah, proper documentary. No, that's cool. Yeah, great bit of advice there as well. Super. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, Francesca, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I've really enjoyed it today. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Uh, brilliant. Oh, cool. Really enjoyed it. Good, 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 good. And hopefully I'll see you again at another um, party or or if I bring my family to London for another holiday, I'll have to get, you oh, know, see if me. you're free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'd love that. I, I, I'd love that. Yeah, that'd be really Thank cool. Thank you. Really cool. I love um, and so anyone listening now, do head to the com or the .com. Um I'll include a link through to Francesca's website and the Vacation Story Award that she won recently as well, which is so good. I really should check it out. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, cool. Um, yes, thanks a lot for your time, Francesca, and um, hopefully see you see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. You've been listening to the one hundred and twenty fourth episode of the This Is Reportage podcast. Super to chat to Francesca there. Hope you enjoyed listening in. Head to thisreportagefamily dot com or thisreportage dot com for a link to her website and to see the fab recent story award of hers that we spoke about too. We now have 124 episodes of the podcast available where we speak to wedding and family photographers from all over the world. If you like this episode, delve into our back catalogue for lots more. If you're not a member of the Shepardage or the Shepardage family, check out all the benefits of joining us, including an unlimited number of images on your profile, 60 individual award and 18 story award entries per year, invites to our physical meetups and parties, exclusive discounts, hours of educational videos featuring tips and advice from some of the world's best photographers, and much more. Submissions are open now for our next awards round. The deadline is the same for both sites. Submit by 2359 GMT on the 24th of March 2023. No poses, nothing staged. This is Reportage. And this is bye for now. Mm -hmm.